<laughs> Look, <laughs> that moment you go to film in your iguana pees and poops <laughs> all, <laughs> all over everything. <laughs> Let's try this again. Two of the most beautiful yet challenging lizards someone could ever own. Eh, some might be more challenging than others, but today we're going to talk about the red tegu, the strong red tegu, and the very feisty green iguana. In this video, I'm going to give you five things to think about when you're trying to decide on a lizard. In this video, we're going to just talk about the red tegu and the green iguana, and which one would best fit you and your family as the best pet lizard. The first thing we're going to talk about is size, okay? The green iguana, all right? They get long and slender. An adult is going to push about four to six feet. And if you think about size and longevity, you're looking at an animal that's going to live for about 20 plus years. That's a long time to have a pet. But just keep that in mind, they are going to get big. When you think about the red tegu, you're looking at two and a half to four feet, okay? So you have two and a half to four feet, four to six, big difference, okay? As well as the longevity of it, the red tegu or tegus in general are going to live 10 to 20 years. So not quite as long that you gotta have that that, that constant love and everything that you have with these lizards. The iguana is going to be a long and thin, okay? It makes them extremely fast, and like I said in the beginning, very feisty, okay? As you can tell, she just bailed out of my video. Where the tegu, okay, is going to be that, that bulky uh, lizard, okay? So, in my opinion, when it comes to size, and hey, we'll just throw in longevity. I'm gonna give the tegu, especially the red tegu, the plus as far as what would best fit you and your family. The second thing I wanna talk about is their defense, all right? The first thing we're gonna talk about is the iguana. But before I even get into that, if you click right here, you'll see a lot of things about iguanas, especially their tail. Iguanas' tails are lethal, okay? Not only are they lethal, they're extremely accurate, which is so awesome about this defense. And that is their main weapon. As you can tell, it is a long, slender whip, basically. If you've never been whipped by a towel at the pool, you have no idea what you've been missing. But their tails are lethal. That is their main you know, form of defense against a threat, eh, mainly against me. Here she goes and she's out. Their bite is bad, but they don't really seem to rely into that unless it's like extremely necessary. A bite from an iguana, especially a full grown adult iguana, would be awful. It could honestly de-glove a finger if they got a hold because the problem is, is that they'll bite and shake. But thank goodness that that is not their main form of defense behind the tail. Then they have their nails. I don't know, I, I, I see and I read so many things that seem to say that their nails are a form of defense, which I think their nails are more a form of inconvenience, especially for us uh, to have them as a pet because their nails just get so sharp to be honest, uh, in the very beginning when she, she pooped and I had to get her up, I mean, she tore me up. Didn't mean to, just, just in the scurry. And it doesn't really seem to matter if it's a tame iguana or not a tame iguana. Their nails are awful. When it comes to defense, iguana's number one source, that tail. Tegus, on the other hand, their main form of defense is that bite. They have powerful jaws, man. I'm telling you, it's crazy the things that they can do with those jaws. And they have razor sharp teeth, okay? So one of those things, especially when they become adults, there are so many awful stories that I've seen from literally tearing off a finger um, to literally missing an entire chunk out of your hand or whatever it is that it bit. People have even said that their jaws are so strong that it's actually crushed bones in their hand. What? 
I can only imagine how awful that would be. Their tails are, are a little, lot shorter than the iguana. It's more like a powerful punch, you know, almost like a, a, a crocodile or an alligator, where that tail can be used as a weapon. However, it's more of a, a power punch. So that would be their second form of defense. Their nails, I think, are the same thing as the iguanas, which to me is a tie. They just wash each other out. If their nails are any form of a defense, it's just more of an inconvenience <laughs> for, for you as an owner when you get them out and, and, and you're especially right now, like when we're trying to socialize this guy, which by the way, he is doing awesome. The second thing, defense, I'm going to give it to the green iguana. The green iguana would make a better pet for you and your family when it came to defense because I would much rather take a whip from that tail than a bite from a tegu. The third thing we're going to talk about is handleability. Can you handle these guys? I look at it, not only can you handle these guys, because let's just face it, I'm crazy. I will handle any reptile you put in front of me. But can your family, can your wife, can your kids handle these guys? Look, let's just face it, these guys aren't great camera lizards, okay? So let's just, let's just go ahead and add that into the list. Are they good camera lizards? Neither one of them. Handability. Look, I'm gonna tell you right now. The thing about the Tegus, they can be socialized. You can actually teach and train them to love you. There's even cases where they say, man, you can train a lizard, a Tegu, to poop and pee in a litter box. I never in my life thought I'd hear it. I haven't seen it yet. Obviously, he's a little young, but they say you can do it. Not gonna happen with the green iguana. To me, in my personal opinion, and what many, many people have agreed with is whatever you have with your green iguana is going to be what you have with your green iguana. I said it in the past videos, 10% are great, 10% are not. Good luck with the rest. But let's, let's just be honest. When it comes to handability, when you're holding them, you're facing their nails, all right? The Tegu, though they do have sharp nails, both of these lizards, their nails can be clipped. But when you're handling the Tegu, his nails just don't seem to do the damage that a green iguana's nails do, clipped or not. Doesn't matter, all right? So when it comes to handability, it's just crazy the difference, all right? You're still thinking about a, such a big lizard when it comes to this green iguana. I mean, remember, they push in four to six feet and their nails are literally like eagle talons, razor blades, points, tips that just tear into you. Where the Tegu does have it, but their nails aren't designed to climb, their nails are designed to burrow. Where an iguana's nails are designed to hit that tree and whoosh, boop, right up the tree they go, just like that. Those nails are, they're miserable, okay? So I'm gonna tell you right now, when it comes to handability, you might be the man, but can your family, does your kids, do your wife, do your friends, does anybody else enjoy holding it? So when it comes to handability, I'm gonna give it to the red Tegu. Honestly, I'm gonna give it to any Tegu in general when it comes to handability. The iguana is just, awful i don't care if it's a tamed iguana or not because the second they start to just even crawl up your arm it's going to tear it up <laughs> i just wish y'all knew what we had to do between these uh these numbers here number four is enclosure let's just face it okay the iguana is going to get bigger and so it already has a downfall in this but the problem is not only do they get bigger so they're going to need a bigger enclosure they love to climb so therefore they're going to need a taller enclosure there's going to need things that they have to have in order to climb from the bottom to the top that's just what they do they love to climb like i said before with their nails that's what they do they climb where the tegu loves to burrow so technically you could put him in a decent in size aquarium put a good some put some good mulch down on the bottom and he loves to burrow as you can see right here, that's all this dude loves to do is burrow. He's sitting here inside <laughs> this log. 
uh, or, or this rock enclosure here because that's what they love to do. They love to hide. Whereas you can tell, she loves to just perch right here. So it's simple. When it comes to an enclosure, the Tegu is going to win. Number five, I like to mix this. Maintenance and diet. And apparently, again, the iguana is camera shy and so is the Tegu. The green iguana, right, loves to eat nothing but leaves, plants, zucchini, squash, fruits, and things like that, okay? It is a, therefore it doesn't eat meat. So it is generally pretty easy to maintenance a green iguana as far as their diet. The tegu, however, is an omnivore where it eats both meat and vegetables. We feed him eggs, we crack them open, we feed him crickets, then we feed him everything else basically that the green iguana eats as well. So when it comes to diet, to be honest, I'm gonna give it to the green iguana. It is just easier to sit here and just meal prep nothing but fruits and veggies and leaves on a plate, however you wanna do it, put it in the enclosure where when it comes to the tegu, it's almost like, you know, it's almost like asking your kids, All right? So, hey, what do y'all want for dinner tonight? Where the green iguana will literally eat any of that stuff that sits in front of them. The maintenance part, to me, they're both about the same, all right? When it comes to heat, light, humidity, everything else, all right? So they both need a specific amount of heat. They both need a specific amount of UV bulb, UVA, and everything else that goes along with it. So in my opinion, when it comes to the, the maintenance part of, when it comes to the UVA, UVB, the ceramic heaters and everything else, yes, they are both a little different as far as the dynamics of where those go, but they require a lot. I'll tell you right now, in my iguana enclosure, we have all three. And when it comes to the tegu enclosure, we have all three. So when it comes to maintenance diet, I'm gonna give it to the green iguana. They both need calcium in their diets, everything else. So when it comes to that, bam, green iguana takes the cake. Man, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I love it, man, I love reptiles, man. But in this video, we compared the red tegu to be honest, all tegus to the green iguana. We went through five categories, and at the end of the day, I'm gonna tell you right now, the tegu, my dog, right here, is by far the best pet lizard you could have, not only for you, but your family. Make sure you guys subscribe, hit that bell so you never miss an opportunity to learn about some amazing creatures. And until next time, boo, as always, love wildlife, and I'll see you later.